Welcome to Black Love Matters for this service therapy session for figuring out adulthood. Loving each other. Or find out in our Brock Michelle. Or Jay-Z and Beyonce. Or can we just, I don't know about y'all, but out here in Northern California, it just felt like, why don't we fall in love weather? Y'all know what I'm talking about with Anne-Marie. Mm-hmm. Why don't we, why? It felt like that. So how about this? Or all the folks who just fallen in love. Y'all know it's about that season when you find that little summer romance. Mm-hmm. You know, I love the Lord, so I be in church. Maybe you look back at the pool. Maybe he done came to church <laughs> this Easter Sunday. Well, you, well, and you might have found the forever. Next to you. I just look next to me and there go my my summer um, <laughs> forever was. So just shout out to why don't we fall in love weather. Does that make sense? Yeah. Y'all, I wish I had the song to play. Like, Anne-Marie, whoever get, get, got that for her. Mm-hmm. It was about. I'm telling you, and it just felt like, why don't we fall in love, weather? And I love it. What'd you think about that, Nero? You know that song was about, but yeah. it, it is that time. You know, the cuffing season. Did it feel like it for you though? Mm-hmm. Or no? That cuffing season rotation is coming all the way around again. It's coming um, full circle. Mm-hmm. You are so silly. Wait, like, look, look, I'm gonna pull it up for y'all just so you can hear. It. Okay. Come on. Circa 1992. Not, no, it's not 92. I mean, not 92. 2002. <laughs> That's enough. We can't play. Anne-Marie. Who was you? I'm Nero. And I'm Nayambi. And this is episode 244, y'all. Hey. He is risen. Just like he said he Just was. Just like he said he would. Be sure to leave one, two, three, four, five star rating review on Apple Podcasts and on Stitcher. What would Jesus do? Oh, you bring, y'all remember those bracelets? WWJD. He would leave a five-star rating review to help us meet our Don't goal. Do Don't do Don't do <laughs> and follow us on all four to social media at Black Love Matters. Maybe will you stop licking me? <laughs> she wants some love, that's all. Um, What's going on with you? It's time for my check-in. Yeah, I actually is. don't have much, right? You know... Holy Week is something I try to keep a little more low key, right? Like these are, like I said, I'm either with friends or families or I'm in quiet meditation by myself. So, you know, Good Friday, I went to um, service and it was great. And it was only 45 minutes to the point Niram was like, I thought you was going to church. And I said, I don't been to church, <laughs> parked, went in, prayed, could communion, come back. Um, but it was good. I, I, y'all, know I, y'all know I come from the multicultural, multi generational church, and I, since I went to the later service on um, Friday, the assistant mm-hmm. Patrick's pastor letter, which is the white man. Y'all know I'm navigating through when white men talk, not the um, not the roll your eyes, not the roll my eye, or just just to disconnect, right? Because he is a good pastor, right, and just really trying to connect to it. But it was just a good word, like you know, we got some rough news on Friday. Um, we definitely gonna share it with y'all later in the podcast. So I think it's a broader conversation to have. So, you know, you know how your spirit just be like, Oh, this is a lot, right? You know, the news that we got, um, on top of like being Good Friday. And if you really just think about like what Good Friday means mm-hmm. and just you know, just being you know, just being in that mind frame was a little bit um but it was good. But guess what on Sunday? Guess who done came to church with me? Hmm. Nero, Nero done came in there on Easter Sunday. Not only did he come in there on Easter Sunday, he came in clean. Like the board of hell. You was clean. You was cleaner than me, honey. I put on a little, um, little swish swish dress. Mm-hmm. Nice little sun. Why don't look? Oh, why don't we fall in love dress? Right. <laughs> Y'all know the dresses that just blow in the wind. Mm-hmm. I thought you were gonna say easy to hike up. Oh, oh my goodness! <laughs> I'm talking about the Lord. What is you talking about? Oh my goodness! I'm talking about the summer love. I guess too. Um, but Sunday church was good. Like at first, you know, because usually folks will come and sometimes it's a longer service because I feel like they try to save a couple more extra serves. Mm-hmm. So it was just for Jesus um, on the respect um, on that he got up just like he said he would on that day. But I thought service was good. Like it was, um, I'm near him. I don't know if you have any takeaways from it, but it was, it, it just made me think, right? You know, I, I've been to a few Easter um service services and you kind of think you know where you're going right you think they're gonna kind of walk you through the whole story and just the idea of being grateful Mm -hmm. but he really his focus of the sermon was this idea of doubting um like your way towards jesus right Mm -hmm. and he kind of centered on the point that the idea is what's real to us um changes and shapes to us right so if you lived in poverty privilege underrepresented you divorced right whatever your lived reality is that's going to impact the way you see the world right so the fingertips you know of your past shapes and impacts you right and so you know he just kind of kept going deeper into that and he talks about how like jesus kind of can step in and and crash the party um 
so good that you just can't get them out your mind, right? First he formulated, you know, he was doing a why don't you fall in love type tough too. Mm-hmm. He was like, you know, I was just, I forgot what he was talking about. Maybe so his my, wife or something. his wife for the first yeah, time. Yeah, and it's like she got saved and I was like, oh Lord, I just got to be a part of her journey and let me go help her. Mm-hmm. Be a part of the walk with you. But she's like, but even after that, I was like, you know, it's just so good, Lord. I just keep reminiscing on it, right? And then he went back to say, you know, when's the last time you, you did that about God? Like, when's the last time you sincerely just fell in love with God, right? And that even after Sunday, Tuesday, Wednesday, you just get up and just think about the goodness of Jesus, right? And just sharing it, right? But then he got us with the old okie doke, right? He was just trying to make us feel good and comfortable. We thought we was going to get a nice little bow top sermon, didn't he? Mm-hmm. Then he hit us with the um, John eleven sixteen and talking about, let's talk a little bit about courage one moment and then doubt the next. He said, let's all talk about old um, Thomas. You and you know, the old school Baptists be calling him old doubting Thomas. <laughs> you know, Thomas be like, okay, I ride with y'all, whatever. But um, I know y'all, like that's y'all God and everything, and that's cool, and I respect that, and I like him. He cool people. But if y'all say he done came back, I'ma just need to see the um holes in his hands mm-hmm. and the um the stab. I'ma need to see all. That. I need to see the stab wounds. Come on, come on, right? And what he really got to it is that like we all got a little bit more doubting Thomas in us than we want to admit it, right? So, you know, hindsight looking in, we're like, oh, yeah, why? How could Thomas ever do that? What is that like? But, you know, the pastor wouldn't really went in like, you know, we have to have truth moments with ourselves. We always have a little space. Um, we have a little doubting Thomas in this, right? And then he went on to kind of explain, like, what is doubt, right? So he really talked about how doubt, doubt was that little space between hope and reality. So think of a Venn diagram, you know, those two oh, circles. You know said think of a Venn diagram. Well, break it down. <laughs> you know those two, you know, those two, cir- you know, the Venn diagram is those two circles and they got that overlapping in the middle. Yeah. You got hope on one side. Mm-hmm. You got, what was reality. that? Reality on one side. And what's that in the middle? And that overlapping. Yeah. That's doubt. Yeah. Cause you'd be like, well, the reality of the situation, you know, take a real basic. The reality mm-hmm. of the situation, my bills is due and I don't got enough money in my account for the bills to be due. Um, right, you know, the hope in the situation is that you know, God will make a way, I'll provide. Mm-hmm. But that little slither in the in the middle is like, but what if not? You're gonna get evicted. <laughs> <laughs> and the pastor's like, you know, these are things we we thoughts we have, and we don't talk about it, right? And he said, a lot of times, what folks don't talk about is that doubt is not immoral or sinful, right? Mm-hmm. Like, doubt is actually a, essential. Like, you can't have faith without doubt. Faith is is not based in certainty, right? So, doubt only becomes sinful or this idea of immoral when it blocks you from faith. Right. So that's I really had to take that um, in. Right. And really, really process that. Right. That that doubt doesn't become the moral sin for until it blocks you from your faith. When do you let your doubt get back? Did you so bad that you're like, child, I ain't doing none of it. Right. Mm. So the way I think about that is, of course, rent due. The Lord going to provide. Oh, Lord, what if I get evicted? Well, the me, the right, the faithful is right. I'm gonna still do everything I gotta do and remain prayerful and keep moving on, right? Right. The it becomes simple. You're like, well, child, forget it. I'm gonna get kicked out, so I'm just gonna get kicked out. I ain't gonna do nothing about it, mm. right? Like, so it's a very nuanced thing, but it's something important and really the idea of unpacking like what your faith means and how it is essential towards it, right? Um, and then lastly, child, I don't even know. I was gonna talk about that this much, but then how do you turn kind of your doubt into faith, right? And what the pastors did that kind of stuck with me was like, you know, you have to drop these ideas of conditions. And I'm like, what do you mean conditions? Right. Just like Thomas said, well, OK, that's good. Y'all believe and that's good. But for me to believe X, Y and Z, I need to see this, this and that. Right. I need to see that nigga here. Yeah. I then the I want holes. some wine, water to the wine. Right. All of that. Right. So when we do that, like then our conditions, the conditions that we set become our God. And God then becomes a means to the end. And when you don't get what you want, you kind of get mad. Mm. Right? So it's shifting that, right? Making sure we don't let these conditions be the God. Right? The idea of not serving two masters. Or, you know, everyone know the praise. Lord, if you just get me through this. Um, Lord, if you just make a way this way, I promise I'll make sure I'll do. do, do. Them are all conditions. Mm-hmm. Right. So it, it took me a minute. Right. I, I don't think I've heard an Easter like I've heard this sermon before of doubting time and all Thomas and all that and connected to faith. But I don't think I've heard it necessarily so deeply intertwined in the Easter context. Right. Where it's so many new people to the church. It's so many other things going on. Right. It was just interesting. Yeah. What you thought about it, Neil? It was definitely an interesting take on it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I agree oh. with everything you said. Neil said, amen. 
Jesus Something ought to be. Well, how was church? And we got out of church on t- to the point, like <laughs> almost scary on time. Like where he was like, because my church, we do communion more than. He was about 10 minutes late. You think he was 10 minutes late? Mm-hmm. I mean, but we had almost double the amount of folks and twice as much stuff to do. But he still got us out of there. Like we did mm-hmm. communion. We took prayers. We asked if you want to join the church at the same time, honey. He said, if you want this, go here. <laughs> if you want that, go there. Do they do communion every week? Mm-mm. Um, but our church, you know, more of the old school churches only do it on first Sunday. Um, but more of the new age churches, the idea is communion is a rededication, right? So when you take communion, it's the idea I of feel like I centering just yourself communion. and connecting it. No, when it's did, not. When the last time I went to church? I went to church at the beginning of the month. Yeah, the first Sunday. Oh. Traditionally, you take communion as a first Sunday, to, as, as a ritual of remembering oh, so and I giving got, thanks and I gratitude. Got. But it's no rule stating it has like it's not in the Bible uh, that say you I take don't communion know. on first I Sunday. I just got crackers and welters twice this month. I yeah, was something was going well, on. I took we take communion at Good Friday service too. Right, oh. it just depends on the theme of your church. Right, it's just a it's a time of like rededication and refocus and practice. Gotcha. Like it's more of like let me be. It's like a meditation, right? Mm-hmm. A devotion. So you can take it whenever you want. Oh, that's what's the you know, because if you look at other church. religions, like especially Catholic, Matt, like they take it different times too. Gotcha. Yeah. So that was church. So how was y'all Easter? Was it? I so enjoy. Is it just me or the children don't be dressing up like they used to? I be, you know, I know the grown folks. Y'all try to do y'all little piece of something. I really look forward to the kids dressing up sometimes too. I love the kids who are overdressed and sweated out. <laughs> well, you know, we in Silicon Valley, so it's a little bit different. Yeah, the grown folks. I don't care what y'all wear, honey. Just make sure it's clean, don't stink. But the children, I do like to see the kids a little dressed up though. They do be killing it. I wanted to see some Detroit pictures. Detroit <laughs> church pictures. I, you know what? When we was walking to church, we seen a couple salmon. Mm-hmm. Salmon linen outfits, though, yeah. which did bring me a little bit of joy. I think that's just black culture in church, mm-hmm. though. So that brought me um, a little bit of joy. What else happened to me, y'all? Y'all, I went to Honey Bake Ham and the Lord provided. Because <laughs> I did not want to cook this Easter because it's just me and Nero. And again, like, what were we supposed to do? I was originally going to Honey Bake Ham just to get a few slices of ham. Because we don't need a whole what? You don't need a whole ham. For two people. As mm-hmm. Nia said, a whole, two people and a whole ham is misery because it never goes away. Like, we have not made a dent. <laughs> you shall sure have it. And I promise I've been eating ham all weekend. <laughs> well, I went. It was this lady. I should have known something was wrong because she was a little, she's a little slow. You know how you kind of go to the register and be like, oh, mm-hmm. this is going to be good. It's like, it's like I almost went up there and was like, I hear you, Lord. I'm going to be patient. <laughs> and I was you. and I was very patient and you could tell she was talking because I was ordering they have something called like a mini ham that was like two or three pounds I was like oh yeah I'll take a two or three pound ham because I can mm-hmm. use the bone for like beans or soups yeah. or something so okay instead of buying slices just give me the ham and then she was like well you know for like 20 more dollars you can get all these sides and all this stuff and you know like, and I started doing the math in my head like well child if I go to the market and I go buy all these sides. It's going to be probably about $30, 40 right. So I say, you know what? Hit me with that cream corn. Hit me with that tater salad. Yeah, go ahead, sweet potato. They tater salad good as hell. Oh, my God, it was good. Like, surprisingly good. Yes. Like, you know, I figured the sweet potato or corn and stuff would be good. But, like, I just had to pick a random one. I was like, well, give me the potato salad. You know, my goal was to just kind of add to it. If I didn't like mm-hmm. it, it's mayo, potato, and egg. We can right. season it up. So I get it. And the lady looking at me like, oh, okay, well, we got um, your ham finishing up, so just move to the side. Okay, mm-hmm. I got my credit card on my hand. I said, oh, okay, I just want to pay. She said, well, okay, just move to the side. I got a line. I said, oh, okay, no problem. Mm-hmm. And then I was sitting there for five minutes. And she's like, well, go wait over there for my manager. I said, okay, I got to pay. She said, okay, go wait over there. And then the manager bring my food. I said, okay, I got to pay. She said, you all set? I said, oh, okay, but I got to pay. She said, G-. "She said we got a line. You good? <laughs> then I had a moment. I said, Lord, Am I about to cuss them out to give them my money? or Because it was the point where I was going to have to raise my voice. right? Because I was like, oh, but I got to do this. And they, the thing is, they weren't listening. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? They weren't listening to me, I don't think they said. Yeah. They, I think they heard me saying, like, I'm waiting for him or something. But they mm-hmm. didn't hear me say, I got to pay. And I was just like, okay, thank you. And I walked as slow as I could to the door. Mm-hmm. For them to be like, oh, wait. And I was going to be like, oh, okay, here you go. Yeah. I got to the car. And I sat in the car. I said, <laughs> well, then, maybe they'll come get me. And then she called me. Yeah. <laughs> Now, what should I do? You, you told him you got to pay three times, right? Yes. Okay, drive off. <laughs> so, y'all, I done got a whole baby ham and all this food for free. <laughs> I've never had to try so hard to pay. To the point where they were like, ma'am. They basically was two seconds from saying, bitch, get out the way. You're holding up the line. Because this is something also that happened. Because I thought Honey Baked Ham was going to be crowded. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, oh, if I'm getting there and that line is long, we're going to keep moving and we ain't getting no ham. We're going to go to Trader Joe's and pick up a little piece of lamb and we're going to have some like a salad with some asparagus and just be still. Right. That was the goal. But I went and I said, ain't nobody in line. Is they closed? What? 
And I went in, as soon as I was leaving, they were talking about get out of the way, the line, it was like 30, 40 people, the line was out the door. Mm. So I don't. Well, you got I, one. At, during Good Friday, I asked for forgiveness. <laughs> I don't even know if it's forgiveness. I'm just acts. covering my bases. He hooked you up. <laughs> you so said it's the love. Lord. You bothering me again? What is what does Nyambi want? That's what the Lord is saying. What? Yes, ma'am. What would you, you ain't like? Happy with the ham? Ham I gave you? <laughs> it was a mini ham. Mm. So you know, it was nice to say about thirty some dollars, but I don't know, y'all. It was good as hell. It was good. Like surprise. You know, sometimes honey baked can be a little salty. Like, it, like I it fall in and out of love with honey baked ham, right? Because sometimes when it's hidden. Is hitting, but when it's not hitting, it is not hitting at all. Like the ham was not fatty, the ham was moist, it was meaty, the mm-hmm. sides were seasoned. Got you can tell like, they just made them that morning. Like got everything, crunchy bits of ham on top of it. Everything I mean, was ham, perfect, honey. Like everything was perfect because you know sometimes honey, especially for holidays, they kind of mm-hmm, you be like, child, y'all ain't try hard, or oh, that's the fatty piece of it. This right. ain't the good piece. But we got so lucky, and we were able just to eat that all weekend. Yeah. Um, and then the last thing, you know, I was talking with my girl. Uh, what we said we caught. I always, I always call her Amiga, thanks to Amaka. me. Amaka. Amaka. And we keep saying, you know, she was like, yes, honey, we got to get this weight up out of us. And so Amaka was like, we need to all, as a black love community, like do some type of pledge in May so we can get ourselves together before Memorial Day. And I was like, yeah, we should do that. She was like, no, nah, but we as niggas, we just can't say we're going to do it. Mm. I was like, what you mean, Amaka? She was like, you know, niggas, we got to put like our uh, uff behind it. So Amaka's trying to talk me into doing this diet bet challenge. I ain't never did it. Um, mm. Like, are y'all? Are they gonna see if I lose? Yeah. <laughs> so you put in money. I I done a diet bet I have a couple not. times. So we thinking about doing what? Near, I'm not gonna do it no. because he said he's not on a weight loss challenge. It might just be me and Amaka doing it, and we might just share ten dollars. I don't even. I haven't even started. I haven't looked into it. I don't know what it means, y'all. But just stay tuned to the podcast. Yeah, I can tell you a little bit about diet bet. So I what think. Is it? So you can do two ways. I think you can do a diet bet to lose like ten percent of your body weight. Ooh! Or, and how quickly? I can't remember. Oh, I'm just trying There's to like do a, a short month. period of time. And, oh. Or you can do like 4% for okay. your body weight. Oh, that sounds And then everybody more. put in money. You can set it up. So like, we can do like, like $5. I don't want to do nothing crazy. No, it's like 30 I think the minimum is like 25 Oh, like, my God. Oh, I'm looking at oh, some of the bets now. So they're like $25, $30. Like some of these pots are pretty huge. Damn. This, oh, my God. This pot is $100,000. Oh, Black Love Matt, that's not the goal. We and, just need to get this weight. And this I was one just got thirty five hundred, uh, thirty five hundred people in it. Oh my god! And so you know, you got stuff like that, right? Oh, black love matters. I was just trying to hope us lose about five to ten pounds in a month, and whoever win get about fifty dollars. So it looked like it go about. <laughs> look, I wasn't trying to do a hundred thousand. Like we don't have to get that big, right? It looked like it go like twenty one days. So like this one starts okay. April twenty second and ends May nineteenth. So that's about about twenty one days, something like that. Oh, okay, not quite a whole month. But, like, we could be, like, we don't have to do what they're doing, right? Like, we can just be in our own community. Yeah, you can create your own one. Like, we get, like, no, this is not meant to be this crazy. This got an $80 pressures. bet. God damn. Yeah, this ain't nothing to bit me high pressure. Like, we ain't trying to take nobody cell phone bills. Like, we just, instead of going out to eat and getting that Popeyes or happy hour invested in the diet bet to, to get on, to hold yourself accountable. Mm-hmm. That's what I see. Also, I don't want nobody to try to lose 50 pounds in a month, right? Like, my goal is everybody lose, what, 8 to 10 pounds. And if you don't lose them, if you don't lose the weight, you lose your money. Yeah, that's that's why Michael was no. That's why Michael was like, no, niggas, you can't just give them inspiration Monday, Wednesday, and Friday because they're gonna be talking about yeah, now y'all be why they eating the twi- a Twinkie. Mm-hmm. But if they gotta put that ten fifteen in, they might do a little something different. Mm-hmm. So stay tuned. We haven't made the decision yet, y'all. Um, but we think we're gonna start at May first and like have it go to Memorial Day and see if we can get a good old ten pounds down. Mm-hmm. I don't know why ten pounds stand out to me. Um, well, whatever four percent of your body weight. Well, four percent of my our body weight. That's that's the lowest one we can do. Mm-hmm. I'm already setting the bar. Four percent and four weeks. Four weeks. Yeah. A percent of that a week yeah. is that a lot? I don't know. Depends on how much you weigh. Oh. You want me to do the math for you? Don't do that on the okay. air. Don't, don't do that on the air now. <laughs> but you can do it off the air, and then I'll get back with y'all. <laughs> yeah, like I, I like I don't want nothing crazy, you know, because. I have never. Seen, I didn't know these diet bet goes to up a hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, people be making like livings off of this shit, especially what? like the weight loss people. Like this girl here, this fat girl, fed up. Yeah, like I used to follow her on Instagram. Why you used to? 
because you know yes. she she falls in line with diet culture and i really don't even fuck yeah yeah that's that. the thing like i just want this to be more of like a jump start because i know us as a community we talk about like kind of just pulling back habits getting right doing what we're supposed to do but sometimes you do need something to say all right this is the day we starting then this is the accountability tool mm-hmm. and so you know and then you know since i'm doing a podcast three days a week this would be a way for us to check in with each other. But yeah. I'm going to do more research because, right, I don't got time for no okie doke shit, right? And we ain't trying to spend more than 15, 20 bucks. So if it's more than that, we might not participate. Mm-hmm. We might just, look, just send in a letter. <laughs> everybody do their own check-in. Look, we just post it on a, um, maybe we'll do like a scale on the Instagram page and everybody just put their number. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we're about free things. We're about, you know. <laughs> Yeah. Investing in ourselves. Well, it is free, if but you, investing appropriately. If you lose, if you lose four percent, you lose okay. that weight. It is. That, free. You sound like a maca. She you get like, that money back. A maca was like Nyambi. It is free. I was like, no, niggas want to put up twenty dollars. Yeah. Then a maca was like, but if we move our black asses, we get it back. Yeah. <laughs> you get that money back. You can go to Target and buy a dress. Oh, come on, they're on sale. <laughs> Shit. Come on. But I, I, I'm not doing it because you know it, it don't fall in line with my. Um, I know. My values, but I, I'm more don't than happy to do it like to. we out here doing coke. No, you know? don't don't do that. <laughs> like here, I'm talking about. Doesn't I don't I don't do drugs. I don't, <laughs> I don't participate in drug culture. No, but I, I'm more than happy to support y'all. Okay, I'm gonna do- cheer y'all niggas on and shit talk. Oh, <laughs> all right, y'all. Let me do a little bit more digging. Um, and we'll present it to everyone. Amaka, if it come up shady, me and you, we'll just do something. But mm-hmm. if it comes, uh, if it passes the Nyambi sniff test, I'll open it up to y'all. And of course, y'all don't got to do it. But if you wanna, um, if you need it, just a little umph. Feel free to join us. Yeah. All right. What's going on? Niram is still. They got Niram is like, doing a lot of research for him not to be involved. See, he wants to just be the boss. That's what this. I'm glad this is highlighting this because everyone thinks I'm the bossy one in a relationship. But I guarantee you, if we do this diabet, he gonna be checking it more than us. They got a 12 month challenge. Damn, Damn. How much money you gotta put in for that one? Uh, hopefully twenty dollars. Maintain body weight within two percent. Ooh. And you gotta put in twenty five dollars a month. A or, month. Or two hundred seventy five dollars up front. We're not there yet, Black Love Matters community. That's but we are at a twenty dollar. <laughs> <laughs> we are at a one time twenty dollar donation phase. We <laughs> Cause I don't know if I'm comfortable giving them twenty that's a lot. Two hundred and seventy five dollars. Up front, just off rip. And you get that money back if you keep that weight off. Yeah. Or maintain. Mm-hmm. Stay tuned, y'all. Nearums. <sighs> For those who want to know I pooped. <laughs> oh, people ask me. Yeah, they was asking. I told you, it ain't normal. If anybody ain't pooped, y'all, y'all gotta get it. That's why I know you had that poison in you. I ain't got no poison, but I still didn't came that down is with something. Poison. What are you talking? about I still came down with something. So you know, I'm over here um, doing everything I can do because no. I got a big race. Tell the people up. what you did. Nero basically left me and Mabel at the house, but we decided to come. With y'all them. decided to come, and we sat in the car. Y'all decided to sit in the car. Why Nero I went, went to into Whole Foods? Whole what did you Foods. have to get, Nero? I had to get two bottles of alkaline water because, you know, I need that Dr. Sebi alkaline water. I got a, a gallon of green juice. Not even the, not even the good green juice. They not got even apples a sugar-filled one. <laughs> they got apples and shit in there. This one got, like, dandelion flour and ginger and all types of other green shit. These are good for you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. A box of vitamin C. Mm-hmm. Uh, what else I got? Um... Some elderberry syrup. Ooh, is that good? It's it's decent. It's it tastes flowery. like flowery. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, some some other stuff. Yeah. Some like zinc and things yeah. of that sort. So mm-hmm. I'm trying to knock this cold up out of me. I've you been will. drinking all this green juice and all these alkaline waters. I meant to try the green juice. Is it really that bad? No, it's just it, it just tastes. Usually you uh, can douse green juice with lemon and ginger enough to yeah, this, chase it. It just tastes very green. Earthy. Earthy is the word. Yeah. Some people might even call it dirt. Yeah. Yeah, like twigs and berries. Yeah. That's why, honestly, I had to cut back on salmon. Whenever I taste salmon, mm-hmm. it just reminds me of, like, sadness and oppression. Why? And, like, a salmon reminds me of diet culture. I don't oh. know. I don't know why. Mm-hmm. But, like, I, I can't. I get, y'all, I, get where I can't even eat no salmon. So. Unless it's fried in a croquette. <laughs> but, like, just a filet of salmon season? Uh-huh. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. And feature with a piece of spinach on the side. Oh, Lord. I just drink a protein shake. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'd rather drink a protein shake for dinner than have salmon and some spinach. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. I can't do it. 
I know I was coming down with something, girl, because like last week I, I was telling Naomi, like, I just feel tired. And I, just, I think we're on the podcast. I wish we were on the podcast. I said, Nero, why don't you just begin taking something? I was like, I feel tired. I said, why not? Because that's what I did, y'all. I literally was chasing like Night Cool and Day Cool. Like, I was shooting it like it was um, what the white boys drink Jaeger bombs. Yeah. I literally had it. Like, it belonged to me. I'm trying to get um, what did it say on Trader. I'm not Trader Whole Foods, but it got like collard greens, kale. It ain't had no collard greens. <laughs> <laughs> and it got collard greens, kale, spinach, some dandelion flour. I'm just getting all the shit up in there. I'm just trying to get all my alkalines together so I can force this uh so I can uh uh force this poison up out of me because I got a big race next weekend this and I can't be sick and I can't be tired. So this fool said collard greens. It's called lot of greens and it has cucumbers, celery, kale, lemon, spinach, dandelion greens, and parsley. Mm-hmm. That ain't that bad. Have you tasted it yet? No. Oh. No, thank you. That ain't my... I drink chocolate protein shakes. Oh. <laughs> so, yeah, like I said, I got collard greens and spinach in it. And um, I'm just over here just trying to get this poison up out of me. And, you know, everybody, all my uh, all my uh, alkaline, um, all my alkaline people were like, you need to get some of that elderberry. Because that elderberry is supposed to help with your immune system. So, you know, I'm just hoping y'all just uh, send me all types of good vibes. Like, pray that the vitamin C and the elderberry um, get this shit out the way. Have you ever heard of elderberry? Yes. So, elderberry, so to, uh, you know, so to knock that poison up out of me. So, mm-hmm. we'll see. It, I mean, but even just if you took an, and I told Nero to do that and also take, like, medicine, right? Like, that yeah. is why the Lord created the night quill in severe for a reason do it all i am because mm-hmm. even if you just do it the normal way the cold usually don't last a week if your cold lasts the normal more than a week you got something else and i don't think you're that sick well you know we're we gonna see i'm gonna take some cbd some night quill i'm just taking all the drugs mm-hmm. okay. motrin 800 what? adderall oh don't do that don't say that coffee nero got some coffee <laughs> you gonna talk about that i brought nero some coffee from my oh, job oh shit so that's what's going on with me. Um, other thing is I had a job interview. Look at um, that. What was that? Friday? Thursday? Friday. Was it Friday? It was Friday. So I got a, I had a job interview on Friday. It was an in-person one. And, you know, I was feeling a little tired. So I was like, Naomi, like, I'm just feeling tired. I got this interview. I don't know if I can stay up enough to even go. Yeah. So she's like, at work. She's like, well, I'm at work. You know, I got a little time. I can bring you something. What do you want? I said, I don't know. Just make sure it's cold and it's kind of sweet. Yeah. I don't want no burnt coffee. Yeah. So she constantly brings it. <laughs> and, you know, I started sipping this shit. I'm like, damn, this is good. But I was like, this is strong <laughs> as hell, too. You said it's strong, but, but it's smooth. It's smooth. That's like, it's like good liquor, right? So you like, you never tried some really strong, like vodka or tequila, mm-hmm. and you know it's strong, but yeah. it's so smooth. It's like drinking Patron for the first time. <laughs> He's like, this like, shit tastes like water. Water. Yeah, you're like, ooh, <laughs> this is not going to be good. When your coffee go down smooth, velvety, <laughs> wait for the cafe. Oh, my God. <laughs> so we get to there. You know, I'm like, damn, this shit ain't kicking in yet. Yeah. So get to the interview. Shit start kicking in. Like, bow. It's like, bow. It was like a slowly bow. It was like a slow <laughs> punch to the chest. I always consider it like that. What's that song? Doom, da, da. Doom, da, da. Doom, da, da, da. Pow. That's how it in my head. <laughs> That's how caffeine works in my head. So I'm at the interview just. Hold on. Do y'all know what I'm talking about? Like the Detroit mistake. Oh, uh, they don't know about Doom Dada? Doom Dada. All the folks in Detroit, like the, the ghetto tech. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm talking about. That's how I feel like caffeine be for me. It's like a slow turn until it hits the, the streets. Go ahead, Nero. So um, the shit just start kicking in and I can just feel like the caffeine pulse through my body and my brain and my arms and shit, right? Yeah. Um, To the point where I was like, um, I'm sorry, but I'm caffeinated. So if I, if I feel like I'm talking, like I feel myself talking uh-huh. fast. Yeah. Uh, you talking about this? Yeah. That's I how feel caffeine myself, goes through my body. I feel myself talking fast. <laughs> so if I'm going too fast, <laughs> please me. let me know. Look. And she said, "Oh, honey, <laughs> I just had two shots of espresso before you came in. <laughs> so we on the same page." And I'm like, oh, I don't know if I can do this. So we, I'm still interviewing. I'm still talking. We get through the shit right. I get through the interview. I meet with the CEO. And his ass Mo is beats. rambling. Mo beats. Hey. I'm rambling. He's building more. I'm talking blah, 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 blah. He's talking blah, 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 blah. 
So after the interview, I get in the car and drive home. And at that one point, here you go. I was like, I'm about to jump out my skin. That's how it goes. I was like, I'm finna jump out my skin. Now I know how Naomi be. Because people Niambi, be talking slow. Oh, they be talking slow. We be going to the movies, and Naomi's like, won't this car just go fucking uh, fast? fast. <laughs> She's like, I'm about to just jump out my skin. <laughs> fucking, I'm about to get out this car and walk. Nope. It just makes you And I'll be looking like, what the it. fuck is up with this girl? <laughs> I'm just walking. That caffeine kicked in. When I got home, I was sitting in the car, and I was like, I can just jump out the roof of this damn car right now. It just start running. It just start. <laughs> I had to text Naomi I'm like, what the fuck you give me? It wasn't even a bad one. I think it was like a shot of espresso. <laughs> I think it was like a maybe a caramel latte or something. I don't know. It wasn't strong, whatever it was. I know one thing. It was thing. ice, so it was watered down. <laughs> Mabel. You hush. I know one thing. I was about to jump out my skin. Mm-hmm. And I know for, I, I'm not a caffeine person. I can't do it. So I literally was talking fast. I was going fast. I felt like the the Einstein meme was next to me because she was asking me about like different uh, like marketing approaches and things of that sort, and social media marketing approaches and things of that sort. And like I'm just going, and I was like, I feel like I'm talking fast. Yeah. And I was like, this is it. I can't do it. <laughs> I rather just. Did it get you through though? It got me through. Mm-hmm. But I don't know if that's one of the reasons why I feel sluggish now. Because like my body That's is how you like always felt <laughs> the caffeine just coming off. Because my body is like you need to get some more of what you had, but yeah. I'm like no, no, I don't want no more. Of that. I don't want no more of that. Yeah, it ain't no matter at all I've had in my life. It had me feeling like that damn coffee you gave me. Yeah, and I do, and I, I'm trying to get down to like two to three days a week. Two. <laughs> It'd be some days y'all see on the podcast, and Naomi just be going, <laughs> and I'd be like, how much coffee did you have? <laughs> Oh, just two cups. Two cup lie. It just be, now you see why. That shit's strong as hell. I don't know how y'all niggas do it. And I see why y'all addicted. I see why uh the gym uh the gym um person. The, the gym person yeah. gotta have six hundred and sixty six milligrams of caffeine for every about, damn workout. Woo! Time to work out. I'm talking about woo! I can feel the shit posting. Like I said, what the fuck? After you said that, I think I need to work out caffeinated. Because I do feel more energy to work out compared to when I'm not caffeinated. I'm telling you, because he's like, get me that pre-workout kick in, man. This shit better than sex. Don't tell my... Because, you know, he worked with his fiance. Don't tell her, though. <laughs> but me off a pre-workout and I work and, and I hit the weights, it'd be better than her. Oh, my God. And I said, oh. What in the bro culture is happening? He is really on some bro culture. Yeah. And I was like, I, I, I know, like... Yeah. I know not to have you spot me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I don't know how y'all niggas do the strong ass coffee. Yeah, but I, I can't do it no more. Okay. First and last time, okay. I done had. Look, you know how people like I done had. You had a bad taste of weed or something. I done had a bad <laughs> taste. <laughs> you need a taste of something. You ain't supposed to get a taste of. <laughs> you know, how niggas be like, oh man, yeah, you didn't had a bad a batch of weed. weed. You start tripping. You start hallucinating. Mm-hmm. You like that was laced with some shit. Or it's like when the uh, when the edible kick in, you'd had too much. Edibles. That's like when I wanted to jump off that uh, balcony. <laughs> when the edible kick in. When the edible kick in. And you you didn't had too many of them because your obesity and set you up wrong. <laughs> that that's how it was, and I was like, Jesus, I can't do it. Now. Honestly, me having that edible doesn't really set the tone. You don't have to worry about me overdoing <laughs> yeah. no, no type of cannabis. <laughs> Like, I respect it, where I think if I didn't do that, I wouldn't respect it. But I'm like, no, just to drop. <laughs> you know, I'm old. I, I'm like near him. I hurt. Y'all know when I done fell in New York. Uh, my knee was hurting. Near him was like, he got some of the cannabis butter. I rubbed that in. I said, that's like new money. <laughs> I told you. I said, that's work. I told you that cannabis butter. So I never want to really ingest it no more. I just want to put it on aches and pains. You just want to rub it I on I started you. my period. My back hurt. I said, let me put some cannabis on my back. I just was all rubbed <laughs> up. And then I got scared because Mabel started licking me. <laughs> Mabel was licking my knees. But out here where I work, people be like, yeah, I give my dog CBD supplements. <laughs> I said, the dogs be high. I'm, Mabel keep barking. Out she here in Silicon Valley, daily. everybody be on daily. something. Look, she go get her day CBD gummy too. Mm-hmm. Could you imagine Mabel off a gummy? Yes. Maybe when we put her on a plane, we'll give her a gu- But we got to see how she act before because mm-hmm. she might act like her mama. <laughs> And she get and lose her damn mind. <laughs> so we had to do it when we at home. 
just to see what she'll do. <laughs> before we and get and lose her. her damn mind. Exactly. Um, other than that, I just want to talk about a few more things. Yeah. Um, have y'all seen that series on BET? Uh, it's either on YouTube or like uh, the actual EBT on the man. It's called like Going Viral. Uh-uh. Or like, uh, what's the other one? Like Finding. So, we was I was watching that. Nero been watching BET shorts. All yeah, I have been watching. BET shorts are, are pretty damn dope. They got something there. Yeah. So, they did one on like Tazon Day. Y'all remember Chocolate Rain? I didn't know until Nero reminded me. You don't remember cho- Cho- Chocolate Rain? What did he say? Rain. Chocolate Rain. Do, do, do. Wait, I find it. So, um, dude was talking about chocolate rain, right? And like how he came up with it and things of that sort. The other thing was like, you know, chocolate rain was about systematic racism. Yeah. This song, this song about systematic racism. <laughs> the thing is, I had to go look at the lyrics. It is about something. See, systematic racism. Some people stay dry and some people feel the pain. That I nigga woke. I didn't know this was a little black boy either. That I nigga woke. A, I thought this was a grown Indian man. That nigga is woke. <laughs> this is a little chocolate. This is a little chocolate mix boy. <laughs> this is a little mix boy. I thought this was a grown Indian. I thought he was somewhere from India. Mm-hmm. It reminded me very Bollywoodish. That nigga is symbols. woke. How many? Damn, one hundred and twenty-one million views. Yep. Oh yeah, he can do that all day. Come on. Look, some stay dry, and others feel the pain. That's systematic racism. I know it was because I was watching it with Nero, and then he was like, "They was like, well, what is it about?" He was like, "Systematic oppression." I was like, "What?" <laughs> <laughs> no, you said, "How the I fuck is song where? about systematic oppression?" I said, "Where?" I missed that. <laughs> you gotta go back and le- read the lyrics. I guess he said, "Stay woke." Because you you be too busy on that chocolate rain <laughs> and that beat, like chocolate rain. And da, da 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 chocolate rain. And that voice. Yeah. Because the voice don't match the body. Usually it's the other way around. Usually it'd be like bigger guys mm-hmm. or like really buff guys they'll come up with a really petite voice he came out with this strong baritone in Man, his teenage body yeah <laughs> but you, you gotta you gotta look at the, the lyrics that nigga is on some woke shit some stay dry other feels the pain you know a baby will uh baby born will die before the sin um, what did the school book say? Uh, it can't be here again. Uh-huh. The prisons make you wonder where it, where it went. What? Build a tent. It still don't make sense. <laughs> still, <laughs> it don't make sense. You got to listen to it, baby. Okay, good for him. Look, raise your neighborhood and uh, uh, raise your insurance rates. It's you know, make us happy uh, living in the gate. So you know, it's talking about how you know niggas want to be in the gated community and shit. Well, shout out to um, made me the, cross the street Tay the other day. Zayday, Tay Zon Day. Tay Zon, what? Tay Zon Day. Tay Zon, shout out to Tay Zon Day. I don't know why I didn't think this boy was black with the name Tay Zon Day. <laughs> I don't know why I thought he was a little Indian boy. Shout out to him. And what else about that Nero you like? Hey, hey, it just I didn't know that nigga was so woke like that. That was the viral one. Yeah, I went viral. Yeah. Y'all know who was on there, my boy. Which one? Andrew Carwell. Yeah, he was on there. Oh my God. He, someone give him a show immediately. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody give my boy a show. Uh the other the other dude, Super Bitch, was on there to do that. Super be, Bitch. Uh, oh yeah, who be flipping <laughs> being Power Ranger? Yeah, nigga be flipping he with the tough. heels on, he with them peak gymnast. boots on. If his stuff was cultivated a different way, he could have a gold medal. I know, right? <laughs> I can't damn. just flip. This he flipping doing... without a run and jump. No. He just flips. You know what type of body strength you have to have just to flip your whole body? This nigga doing it in the heels. I'm more impressed about that because I know some of y'all chicks would have broke the damn heel. This nigga broke did the, the heel, shit. Broke my neck. <laughs> <laughs> this nigga broke your leg. Broke my back. Broke everything. The heel is the least of my worries. This nigga over here doing the shit and landing on all the heels and shit. That's, like, that's why we got to do the diet bet. <laughs> <laughs> And get this four percent. Was that the lowest, Nero? Mm-hmm. Can't do ten. No, you can only do that four percent. All of us about to lose. So uh, who else is on there? Because I ended up watching all of them. That older lady from the uh, that was look a like mayor. Cardi B. They look like Cardi B. She do like Cardi B. She do. When Cardi she's B look like her. She's older. Yeah. Come on. I, 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 she don't look that bad. She's an older woman. Mm-hmm. Good for her. But you really, what well, the ones that I really found fascinating was finding. Uh huh. 
Because remember the one they had with Nivea? Yeah. That was the first one I watched. But they have like five or six other ones, mm-hmm. right? They had one with Jay Holiday, Tweet. Why am I forgetting the other people? Um, Jaquan. Jaquan. Oh, my God. Some of those, y'all, it's hilarious. So either go on YouTube or go on the BET app. One thing I will say, one trend I found was Arister was fucking over people. Arister Records Can was we fucking talk over about all types Arister, of people. Arister, who's at L.A. Reed? Mm-hmm. Can we talk about how they just... Every person, but Jay Holiday and... I'm going to say Jay Hood. Jay Quan and Tweet, was it? Yeah. All of them was like, yeah, when the Arister merger happened. What it, it meant merged with Jive? Is yeah, it? Something Jive. like that. They said fuck all of them. Yeah, because Arista had went bankrupt or something like that. And how they go bankrupt with all them stars? And mm-hmm. they weren't paying them halfway decent. No. Crazy. But I didn't realize how problematic Jay Holiday was because he came on that television and just said a bunch of things that no one really asked him to say. And oh, like what? You ain't think he was problematic. Where he was talking about um like Beyonce and the different celebrities and how like their people are kind of overworked. Like, no, he was saying that women who are out now who are singing R B songs, maybe we should stop singing so negatively about black men. Mm-hmm. And all the black women turned around to be like, so we're just gonna ignore the thirty plus year history of hip hop and niggas calling black women bitches, hoes, tramps, and all that. We're just gonna ignore all that. Mm-hmm. And we just started our journey, maybe the last ten years. And you want us to stop? Jay Holiday, two hits. Is that what you want? Yeah. Talking to me. Beyonce and all these other women mm-hmm. who's keeping you niggas afloat. Okay. No, he's problematic and said that confidently. You gotta be confident. Yes, sir. Yeah, I bet he was. <laughs> <laughs> so he made me sit down. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I didn't realize it was like a whole beef with like who wrote bed and who didn't write bed. Yeah. And who went my friend and Chris Brown. I was like, niggas and R- R&B niggas I'm, and beef is yeah, whack. Niggas be beefing. It's whack. I wasn't impressed with it. You, you you never would think niggas that be uh, dancing with their shirt off be beefing. So damn tough. Like I don't know why it's just simple. Like my nigga, my manager paid for the drawing first. Sorry. Yes, yeah. that's it. And like I did not write this. And that's the thing. Like, like we that's, all that's know, dream wrote bed. It sounds like falsetto. Yeah. Oh, it does. Eh. Remember eh. that? Remember what was eh. the um eh. early two thousand? Everything echo. Yeah, that was that. Cause eh. Dream wrote everything, and it sounded like that. Eh. 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 That's just like the Migo stuff now. Whoop, whoop. Mm-hmm. Eh. Eh. We just go through syllables like babies. <laughs> but shout out to Tweet. Yeah. Oh my goodness, I miss Tweet. It's actually some of her newer CDs. I'm gonna have to go out and listen. Y'all, when she they hit, oops, there goes my shirt up. I said, come on. First of all, I think I was in high school when I come out. Mm-hmm. What was I doing listening to Tweet? Tweet was grown. Hey, she was still on teach her how to masturbate. And we ain't even. And I don't think nobody really knew <laughs> what was really going on. Uh-huh. Child, this came out. I heard that. I said, oh, that was a moment. Y'all tell me when you heard this one. The moment. Hey. What was that? There. What you say? Hey. What you do? I came home. No one ever got to my house past eleven o'clock. <laughs> So shout out to Tweet. She got some new stuff coming on too. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, she lost her stuff like because of Arister. Yeah. Oh, and also Tweet song Call Me. Yeah. This was an error too. No when you like Call Me. Hey. Oh. Oh, y'all better stop. I'm too old. I'm just saying though, like you can tell a dream song because they all sound the same. Yes. Like Dream wrote Umbrella for Rihanna. Ella. Ella. Hey, hey, hey. I mean, that's just like Timberland. You can yeah. tell a Missy song. I'm you put you to bed, bed, bed. Or Shorty is a 10. ten. Oh, no, I didn't echo on that. It sounded like it was. <laughs> Who else was they on their own finding? Um, they did Jay, Can we talk about Jay Kwan oh, and lip. how he's another one who needs a reality show? <laughs> Y'all just go watch. The Jay Kwan one was up there with Nivea. So mm-hmm. you know how Nivea, you was like, I cannot believe she's being this raw. Yeah. This is who she is and she's not hiding anything. Mm-hmm. Jaquan tweet and um what you call was a little bit more polished. Mm-hmm. Um, but Jaquan, if you want a good key, drinking is he is that. Uh-huh. Yo, I got a fake ID. Yeah. No, no, no. That's the air too. Yeah. Yeah. How this song yeah. sounds is how he acts. Yeah. <laughs> what? What? 
And this fool said when he was writing the song, that's how it came up. <laughs> Everybody was like, oh, wait, you going to continue to say three and four? He yes. said, that shit sound good, that don't shit it? That shit sound dope. <laughs> this is my shit. Y'all niggas should be sleeping on this one. Now. Hood what is that? Hood hop. I wasn't going to say that. I only remember uh, Tipsy. You don't remember Hood huh? Hop? Baby. I thought Nelly did this. No. They all kind of sound the same. Or, um, what's the other one? Grinding. That's clips, though. That sounds a little like this, too. That don't sound like ground is grinding either. No. It does sound like that. I'm a... Till I'm gone. That was the beginning of that sound, though. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Pop, I can drop it. Reminds me of that, too. Man, this bring me to, like, my, uh... It was old. That's my first Q like party I went to in undergrad. Or just house parties. Niggas was stumping and yelling. You said stumping and yelling. Yeah. If you want to know what the cues would just look what Beyonce did on her. <laughs> the cues would get on your nerves at the party. Because they're not delicate at all. They're not aware of their space they take up. And usually they're not on beat. <laughs> <laughs> no fits cues. That don't sound the same. Nigga, that sound would just went off. No, it don't. Are you serious? That's not the same. Okay. Now go back to the hood hop. That don't remind you. No. It does. Don't be mad. It don't, Because it sounds similar. It don't. A DJ will mix those two together. Hey, yeah. And watch, they're going to start stomping in the streets. Street. <laughs> watch. No. Watch when the beat drops. You don't remind me of Pop, Rock, and Drop It. Pop, Rock, and Drop It. That is a... Y'all, what's the difference? <laughs> it's totally different. It's not. And you going to say Pop, Rock, and Drop It. Like, when they be like, dunk. Dunk. Toot that ass up. <laughs> oh my God. What was we listening to? I see why our parents were ridiculous done with us. <laughs> this? Yep. They yep. Don't. Similar. They're cousins. Mm. Yeah. Toot that thing up. Toot that thing up. Mommy, make it No. It's the same genre. It's like in there. Mm-hmm. Yes, it can. They can all be mixed in together. Yeah, exactly. They're the same beat. What's it called? Beats per minute. Mm-hmm. They all in there together. Oh, that remix with uh. What is it? We T-Pain. are not paying with T-Pain. You know what? We sleep on T-Pain. He was in his early 20s when he yeah. did all this. Who's that? Here we, nigga. But- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, I should know. Is that the one who talked about Holly Berry? Yeah. I can't. Okay, come on, there. We're not paying these people. Yeah, I'm having a He's old ass. All the young 25 year olds and you don't know what the hell it is. This is our version of the new Yeah. He was jamming. We, I, I, they, people gave um, him a hard time. And now I'm realizing how young he was, right? Because mm-hmm. he had another say he about our age now. So, if he was about our age, and when that came out about 10 years ago, so he said he was in his early 20s. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, remember when Jay-Z came out of Death of Autotune and shit? Yeah. Like, that, listen, Jay-Z, that was a little intense for you to come at a 20-year-old, and you were in your 80s. <laughs> <laughs> T-Pain had a lot of respect for him. Because that would have been, in my 20s, mm-hmm. that would have been a statement I released. <laughs> listen here, old grandpa time. <laughs> Right, and don't get me wrong, I love that the auto tune too mm-hmm. that Jay Z came out with, but that was a dig. It was at them kids, and they were kids. They weren't. They were barely twenty one. Mm-hmm. He was a little intense on them. He was a little Joe Button. <laughs> he was a little Joe Button amigos. You treat me. He was Joe Button. It was a moment people were going, and Jay Z was leading that whole tribe of niggas who were saying death of the auto tune. Yeah. And but then that was what? not necessary, Jay Z one. But it wasn't necessary. Well, to define win. one. That's what I said. Define one. T Pain them. They all dream. They all doing really well. I think they're better producers than artists, but they're still doing very well. What do you mean? Migos still use auto tune. They never mind. I was gonna say something else. Kanye West came out with a whole uh a whole what's the name what album you using? Kanye? Yeah, eight hundred eight and heartbreaks. That was a strange one. Oh, that was a damn. Who did that come out? Uh, 2005, six. No, 2010. Oh. No, that's no. Nah. I don't know. That was the too. I feel like that was close to the graduation, though. <laughs> I feel like I got a little more mature. Like, come on, mm-hmm. come on, come on, 
Come on, let the children. Come on, Joe Button. <laughs> Who you a hater? Let, let the kids have fun. You such a hater. Now that I'm older, I'm like, let the children have fun. Because mm-hmm. if they really wanted to zap and Roger really could have came out the dust. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, all you niggas really can sit down. <laughs> because have you heard Computer Love? <laughs> Computer Love. Hey. Remember you used to do the hand on your chest? Yes. Yeah. Hey, I can't do that. <laughs> oh, that's a hood classic. <laughs> Hey. I used to do the slaps, y'all. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Hey. Come on, come on. We off task. Where's the hour end? We might as well go. Oh, my God. Look, as always, thank you for sure. Because I'm People starting start to emails like, we need y'all niggas to write some notes because you are too comfortable <laughs> just chatting it up. Hey, this is our podcast. That's this true. Niggas get mad. Touch on. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> well, child, that's what we want folks to start their own. Mm-hmm. Child, you know I keep forgetting to um to um write into Chris and Carlos. And mm-hmm. I, I, y'all, y'all got a um letter coming from me soon, and I'm gonna show out. <laughs> but I want folks to start their own. Yeah. Um. Okay. Anyway, that was wait. Was that pillow talk or your check in? That was just both. Oh shit! But what did we? We're gonna do some pillow talk. A couple things I do want to talk. You want to talk about your? Uh, Let's talk about little. All right. You want to talk little yeah, or your little? All right. How you like it? We want to go see it, y'all. Let me tell you about the old girl, Nyambi. Don't do that. It was a great movie. Every time. Can we shout out to Marce Hare? Who did her hair? Shout every time a spe- uh, particular actor came on the screen, <laughs> I hear Nyambi mumbling, talking about she can't act. <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> Don't do that. Don't do that, because I'm going to work with Issa Rae. And then she going to go back in these files and be like, so Nyambi. <laughs> so Nyambi. <laughs> I like since you don't got good acting coaches. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody always talking about why she only playing herself. Child, you know what? I need to stop hating and start embracing. Maybe I need to start finding roles that's just really just my own. Yes. And just thrive. Mm-hmm. Right? Like, um, can we? T- I need to work with Childish Gambino, mm-hmm. that Donald, Danny, Donald, Donald Glover. Because did y'all see the commercial he had with Monique? Mm-hmm. Shout out to um, him just working with folks who air quote black ball. You know the whites have problems with like even sometimes yeah. yeah like it's something too that that I appreciated him too. And some of them were funny as hell because yeah. I feel like he just let Monique be Monique. Oh, what's that one where she said something about his uh, stomach, stomach looking like a loaf? Yeah, I told you, like he have that dad bod. It's cute though, but he do be having that little piece of dad bod. He cute though, honey. I like the dad bod. And she and he then he look he took get a Nyambi look when Nyambi got on the scale too. <laughs> Me and um, Nana was like, what? And she was like, yeah, Nana, get out your feelings, baby. It's there. It's cute, though. Get out your feelings, though. You're looking like a loaf. loaf. Get out your feelings. It's the truth. <laughs> oh, I wish. I cannot wait to be get to Auntie sta- Annie status so I can just say that to somebody. Mm-hmm. Get out your feelings. Like, I'll say, because now I feel like I'm still at the age where I'm like, well, let's unpack it and it's not you. But I just want to be at the Annie stage. You'd be like, get out your feelings. It's the truth. <laughs> like, that's just the sentence that follows. Mm-hmm. I love you, but it's the truth. Little was a, it was a funny mm-hmm. movie. Mm-hmm. It was a good it movie. Was cute. It was like, cute. It's, like I would love. I think that's what I'm talking about. Where we just want to see a variety of black films, mm-hmm. right? Like everything that has to be Twelve Years a Slave. Everything doesn't have to be so. I don't know. Intense is that mm-hmm. the word? Am I using the appropriate word? Yeah. Like so emotionally training, yeah. right? Don't get me wrong. We need those, right? I, like I said, we know we're near done making slave narrative pictures, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm not on that team when niggas like no more slave pictures. No, we ain't told nearly enough stories, right? But it was getting tired when that was the only kind of narrative and movie that was coming out, yeah. right? So I appreciate that we're able just to have a variety, right? So all in what the last, what, four to six months, we've got in um, Taraji new movie that talks about the civil rights, the movement down mm-hmm. south. Um, we've got in Us, which is a, ho- a, a, a social commentary horror. Yeah. And we have Little, who's like a <laughs> straight up comedy right like that's all um, not slapstick's not the word because i don't want to come yeah. off disrespectful it's but like slapstick, but it was definitely a comedy like, very physical comedy type like that type of genre right like mm-hmm. so that's what i just appreciate having the variety of it right is this a is this the, i always put up the color purple is this color purple no mm-hmm. but it's pretty damn funny and i enjoy it right mm-hmm. so go support her and i i'm hoping uh uh marseille continue to ep mm-hmm. right on and on and on, because I'll be supporting it. Just like Issa, whatever she going to come out with, I'm going to go see it too, honey. Like, I just enjoy seeing it. Shout out to Regina Hall, who's my agent. She's not. 
It's like she picked a moment in time and made a pact with God or I'm not sure who and said, Lord, okay, we're going to stop here. Just and gonna stop. I'm just going to be here for 20 years. I'm and okay then we'll, we'll renegotiate the contract in 30. Mm-hmm. It's like, they don't even match up. Um, and also shout out to who Will Packard. Will Packard's making these damn Who'll movies. Who'll be on a lot, but be low key. Because so I don't did, see him in a lot of interviews or nothing. No, so he did What Man Want. Uh-huh. And now he did a little. He's doing like these uh, r- originally, comedy. yeah, ro- a rom-com, but also movies that were like originally white. Uh-huh. Oh, and oh, yeah. flipping around. So like, oh, what man that's want true. was like? Uh, Can that, that just be a genre? That was like based off of that Mel Gibson movie, like what women want. Yeah, and I think it was one before that. Like, yeah. it was even whiter. Mm-hmm. It's like a Star Is Born. Like the whiteness just. Pre- Can we get a Star Is Born black version? I mean, I think that's mahogany. But can we get both? Can we get a black version of Star Is Born? Y'all, I love Shallows. The Shallow. With Bradley Cooper and Lady Gaga. Mm-hmm. Oh my God, I love that song. But can we get that and get Mahogany redone again? And I want to say a little oh, bit like a, like a playoff of, was it like Freaky Friday? Freaky Friday, I think. Yeah. yeah. But still. I like it. To take all the, take, no, still, that's my, that's my motto, Rob and Duplicate. He should just go through all the classic white films. Yeah, and make them black. <laughs> that should be the name of his company. Shit. Make them black. Make it black. So now I need to go These back and look like at TV all the shit. Yeah. And just go through all like those classic type movies. I understand what you're saying. Let's do Grumpy Old Man. Yeah. Black version. Right. Let's do First Wives Club. Mm-hmm. Black version. Black version. Because I love, like, these are movies I love, though. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. That's why Nero teases me because I be watching white movies because some of them are freaking classics. But can- hey, you get some old black men on there, I'm going to watch it. Yeah. I would love a First Wives Club with black women. Oh, my. Who you going to have die. play? You can have Mama Greenleaf play on there. No, I think you might go. I think you got to go a little younger. Yeah. You got to do Viola. Okay. You Viola try Taraji. I guess you could. You could have. Mama Green Leaf, Viola, and Taraji. Yeah. But I also I want some new ones in there, too. Okay, Issa. Mm-mm. <laughs> <laughs> she can EP it. Uh-huh. We can get some. Actually, don't make me too many big names. Let's get two of them. And then let's get two people we never even heard of. Nola Darling. <gasps> yes. Yes, I love Nola. Gosh, she's gorgeous, though. Y'all mm. know what we're talking about from She Gotta Have It. And Tessa Thompson. Well, I think her name know. is Ryan or something. Put her in there, too. God, they're gorgeous. I would love to see that. Mm. I'm up for that. Are y'all up for that? Can we do a black version of Notebook? Anybody oh, got to uh, contact to uh, Will Packard? I'm Let him know about this pitch. Just do it all black. And then when white people ask, do like they do on Act Crazy. Yeah. Oh, I guess it is a little similar. I guess it is similar. I never I thought of that. never even thought about that. <laughs> and get quiet. Right. Can we do the black version of the blind side? Hey. Can we have a black family take up? <laughs> Adopt a white boy and then his ass learn how to rap instead of play football. Shut up. No, he ain't going to rap. Basketball. <laughs> his ass learn how to play basketball. And get the whites upset. <laughs> and, and we can be the blacks. Like, what is happening? We it's need just to change this good. narrative and have a black savior. It's just a feel good um, dramedy. <laughs> this is a, it's just a feel good dramedy. I don't know why the whites are so upset. Right. Uh, but I would see it. I'll be there too. Oh my goodness, that's a great idea. Y'all let Will Packard know. Also speaking of, speaking of Blake, um, great black directors, um, y'all better send y'all thoughts and prayers to John Singleton. Yeah, he done had a stroke. Honey. Damn it, man. You listen, take care of yourselves, and I know all the folks who work and take time out. Take time out, John. I think he was right in the middle of about to start filming or filming Snowfall. Yeah, season three. Take time. Damn. Heal, John. Don't you rush. We'll be waiting on you when you get back. But heal. Take your time. Mm. What you think, Nerums? Yeah. I heard that was a sad, too. You know, black man got it better. Yeah. All right. Let me see. Maybe we'll just do one last topic. Like, y'all know, I said I got some rougher news earlier this week. And it turns out, like, one of my mentors, actually her husband passed away. Mm-hmm. And it was devastating and shocking, right? And, you know... I, I can only imagine, right, the hurt and pain and devastation that her and her family's going through. But I just wanted to take a moment to um, just to talk about it as mm-hmm. a community, right? Like, how do you best support, like, mentors or, like, um, I don't want to say, I guess elders is the word, right? Mm-hmm. But how do you support elders who, like, the young elders? How do you, you know what I'm saying, mm-hmm. right? So I think what makes this so heart-wrenching is that, like, they're young, right? They're in their late 50s. Right. Right. Like we're not talking about people who are in their 60s, 70s, 80s. Right. That I think is a little bit more. I don't think you ever can prepare for death, but there's a little bit more sense of peace. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming when you get up in age, 
um, compared to where you're younger. You know it's there, but it's more of a distant. But you, y'all know what I said when God says, give me back my breath. Um, <laughs> you do it mm-hmm. at that moment. So I just wanted to take a moment to unpack with you all, right? Because yeah. I'm even seeing, like, as a mentee, what does support look like yeah. in that situation? But just to be there, right? And then the other layer of, t- of to that is being in a relationship with someone, right? So they were married 20, 30 years, I'm assuming. I'm actually going to lean closer to the 30-year mark. Mm-hmm. And having someone taken from you unexpectedly with no health problems, nothing going on, just spoke that morning, right? How do you, what's the next step? Yeah. How do you do it? So that idea of being, you know, black and brown as a widow, yeah. what does that mean and what that look like? So I just want to take a second. Like I said, I don't, I don't have the answers, right? Um, I haven't been in that situation. I'm not a widow. Um, I've only seen other folks kind of go through it, but I thought it would be a good conversation for us to have as a community and also for folks who have gone through it, right? I'm sure there's folks who are widows out there that have advice to best support other like new widows right or mm-hmm. being the other folks out how do you support um but i figured you know we could talk about it a little bit and hopefully during shout out friday some folks to send some resources or you know i don't know yeah. i don't know <laughs> right like that's i just want to be a fr- i don't know this is one of those situations where i don't know but I, what i do know is me not saying anything that's not acceptable mm-hmm. right i think any traumatic event because i think people go through a variety of different types of traumatic events and what i've learned is saying nothing is not what you do no right you say the wrong thing before you say nothing at all right because even minor traumatic things if your community of support's not there and you get nothing that's so hurtful Mm -hmm. compared to you know it's a lot i don't know it's just a lot easier to process like damn i can't believe someone so said that whole stupid shit right Mm -hmm. (laughs) compared to like i don't know where so and so and them was at right was they here right you know it's a it's, it's just different right so you know i haven't physically called her yet right but i've been trying to send you know just text message not a lot right but maybe once a wet day saying you know i'm thinking about it, i'm caring for you i will be at the service like you know something mm-hmm. like that but i don't know what do you think about that you supporting like a mentor or elder or like just folks through that grief like how do you support people through grief and especially grief when you lost of a partner because i think that's different yeah. it's different i think it's hard right <laughs> Uh, because it's two different things, right? You see this person as an elder, and you expect the thing, to, you expect it to go like the other way, like they're there to help yeah. support you. But it's really hard to try to figure out like how to support them um, in the way that they have to support you in, in your times of need, right? Mm-hmm. And then the other thing is that, you know, with it being a mentor, and things of that sort. Like you, you've only known that person for a very uh, select period. Yeah, very specific time and a very specific role. So yep. it's hard to even look at them outside of yeah. uh, a brother, a dad, a father, a brother, sister, cousin, or whatever, wife, whatever, yeah. a wife or a husband. Because only thing you see them as is like that mentor for that specific time that they mentored you through. Yeah. So I think you know that's more or less hard and. Um, and just trying to figure out like how to really like process that, right? Yeah. And I think the only way you can do that is just being like as supportive as possible as you can, right? Yeah. Sending, you know, talking, sending good energy, um, is definitely one of the ways. Right. Or just step up, right? Yeah. Uh, and be like, all right, you done so much for us or for me, like I want to do this for you. Yeah. Yeah. And whatever way that may be. I think that is a thing that I'm learning, like, especially like going through traumatic events and even going through like loss of relatives and planning funerals. Because that's the thing I was telling near. I'm like, I feel like the only time I've been going back to Michigan or like traveling has been for a funeral, for like ne- a funeral and or negative things. Mm-hmm. Right. Like nothing. T- every time I get on a plane, it is not like, oh, this is going to be great. Right. It's all uh-huh. like, Lord, let me get my mind right. Like and do that type of stuff. But going back to what you say, near, it is something to stepping up. Mm-hmm. Right. And just doing something. Right. So I plan on when I get back to where I'm going to be at, just triaging the situation and just being probably a little bit imposing myself on situations that I normally like. Well, let me, what do I need to do? I'm not asking questions. Uh, like, I'm going to go over there and be like, hey, hey, how are everybody doing? I'm going to literally be over there for 10 minutes and I'm going to examine. Right. Like, is there paper plates? Is there right. water? Is there food? Look. Is it toilet paper? And then whatever I don't see, I'm like, oh, you know what? I'll be right back. 
I'm gonna go get some toilet paper. <laughs> you know, just just show up there with Popeyes. Yeah, like that's what I'm, I'm gonna go chicken. check out first, right? Because you know some folks have that, right? Like mm. we don't need another piece of damn chicken, right? I'm gonna go triage and I'm gonna just move, right? Because I think that's the biggest thing I've learned. Even like going through like with my grandparents, right? There's people coming over and they're asking. It did start to get irritating. People like just let me know if I can do. It. Well, I don't know. Right. I'm trying look, to keep yeah, it around. second by second, minute by minute, hour by hour, day by day. I don't have time to make you a to do list. Right. Look around. Or give me an option, right? Give me a give me a two right. things. Say A or B. Look around. Yeah. Do you see anything missing? <laughs> Do you not see plastic forks? Do you see all the forks and the spoons in the in the, uh, in the sink? Right. And you know one of my things is Wash I love I love all things administration, right? So I plan on going to be like, hey, would you like me to just send these thank you? I'll take this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'll write these thank you cards. There, they are done. Mm-hmm. Here's the stamps. There you go. Right. Right. Like stuff like that. That type of stuff. Let's go ahead and mail merge these. <laughs> <laughs> and print. Right. So that's, I think that's what I'm just trying to, you know, think of how to best support. Because it is a fine line. Right. I think I've been with other folks who are older, who've lost like their spouse. Right. You know what I'm talking about. Mm. But I've been so much more closer to them. So it's a lot more comfortable for me just to. Right dive in move right you know what i'm saying and me and this man we're close right but i i i, I am very aware that there's other folks around her circle right. right and sphere of influence and i don't want to impede on that right and i think that's what i was worried about um but i don't i, don't, I think i'd rather just get people to look at me sideways and mm-hmm. do what i need to do um to to be in that place um but the other thing that i want to talk about too is what how and if there's any folks who are widowers out there, let us know. Like, how do you navigate through that space? Mm-hmm. I know a conversation that a few of us was kind of having was because their relationship was just so beautiful, right? And uh, um, a very clear picture of black love to me. Mm-hmm. Um, and I would say the black love where you interwine passion um, in, like, work, right? Like, all of that. Like, right. the work that they did, they had fun together, they tried. Like, everything was so interwoven that they were almost one right Mm -hmm. and i think when he passed right he was a little bit more of a social butterfly right Mm -hmm. like um i forgot his sign he's a leo right so leo men are very they like i'll say we we like the limelight sometimes right like we like to show like we we there right where i think she's um still waters run deep Mm -hmm. right so Gonna have a good time, loyal, gonna support you, right? But her circle is tight as a Cheerio, right? You ain't necessarily gonna see her just rip and run with everybody. So what do you do when it just becomes like her? Like, what does that then look like now? Mm-hmm. And I think that's the conversation we were having. Or I'm just even curious, like, just as a Black Love Matters community, like, what does that mean, like, in your partner, right? Because I think that's even in relation, every relationship's kind of like that. You rarely find a relationship where everybody turned up. Right. Or everyone's low-key, right? Like, there's some type of yin and yang to it. And what do you do and how do you navigate through when that yang or that yin is missing? And I know what I was beginning to think about is how do you begin to rebuild and redevelop your identity? Yeah. Um. Once your spouse or partner is gone. I think that's hard. And is that just a phase you go through? Is that something that you nip in the butt before you even get there? Mm. Right. Is this going back to what the old school say? Like that you can't be so wrapped. Like, I don't know. And I think I was going on both ends of that. Mm-hmm. Right. Because actually one of our friends team, they was like, yeah, remind me of you and Niram. Because, yeah, you know, Niram got friends, but you be low key. And I'm like, what? What? Man, I, mean, I, I love the Lord. Time, but the only friend she got is the Lord and sometimes her mama. Which is true. Name Niram. Just <laughs> Lord. Look, you ain't even my friend Niram. Nope. Mabel can add, you know, she pure. She got pure heart. She going to tell me how she feel. But what do you think about that, Nero? I'm being a little bit more out there, and I guess you you're more of the social butterfly than I am. I am. Yeah. Uh, you know, that's something I really think about. Like, if I'm out of here, oh, you know, Jesus. you know, yeah, because so you, you out of here. I'm out of here. When the Lord say, "Give you back your breath," and mm-hmm. you say, "Here it is," you know, uh-huh. who gonna run to you? Who gonna who? Who gonna run to comfort you? It's gonna be the real ones. I guess that's when you learn who the real, the real ones, ones are. Is. Yeah, that's true. You know, I mean, God, right? Mm-hmm. Like, I, honestly, that's what you got to really, you, or, or greater art, whatever it is, like, it has to be something broader than you. Because I even argue, right? Like, not that I even was processing that after my the friend said that. And then, you know, of course, I get shady Leo to be like, well, y'all alleged friends, and you think they really going to be there? 
Do, well, right? Now. Right? Do you, like, I think the other folks would be the other downfall, right? The more social folks yeah. who have, like, the broader circles and alleged perceived friends, I think they're going to fall harder, right? I know what it is to be alone. Right? Mm. Like, it, it's a different type of round or just a different way to look at it, I guess. Yeah. Right? Because I think the other folks will expect folks to show up. But right when you expect people to do something, honey, they'll show you. They'll show you better than they could tell you. For sure will. <laughs> and then what does that mean? Because then you look around and be like, oh, I thought, I thought, I thought. When I'm saying all along, like, well, it looks like it's just me and you, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> now, Yami going to tell me that I got uh, if she go before uh, before me, I got 11 months. You I got 11 wait, months. I got to wait 11 months. I don't say you have to, to wait on. for anything, Nero. <laughs> but I would say you can give yourself a good 12 months of really just processing, unpacking. Mm-hmm. But after that, then you can start throwing like you can, you know, because some people don't even um, like go through clothes like people don't do that. Like some yeah. people do it. For, it takes years. I told Naomi to she go got... through that. And they have like this guilt from the folks when I talk to it's a guilt that they almost don't know what that person from the folks I've talked to. Mm-hmm. They don't know what that person would want. Right. Mm-hmm. Does that mean? And I think that is a very deflection right i don't mm-hmm. the person is that ain't the big person we need to worry about like they they what they save you mm-hmm. right we here on earth still battling through stuff right but i just wanted to verbally say it out loud to you so if you ever thought what would i be want 11 months is good no. after 11 months i'm gonna say get some of this shit now come on and i gave you three yeah ne- <sighs> near was so shady he said you could take i'm like what about you near what do you think he's like yeah about 90 days i said like probation at work yeah and then what i'm supposed to do move on I don't think you, you know, I, I think when you're that intertwined, I don't know if you move on. Take I think your you, insurance money and travel around the world. Oh, I'm, oh, I'm going to do that. But I don't think you ever move on, right? I think mm-hmm. grief is waves. I think it's good days and it's bad days and you navigate better each day, right? And I think it's an evolution of yourself. But I'm even like being very careful with the, and of course I would never say it's supposed to work. Like, I don't think there's no move on. Mm. I think it's an evolution, right? A shift, a change. But move on? No, I don't think that ever happens. Mm. And that's for a few folks who pass, right? I think that goes for parents, children, partners. I don't think you don't move. It's not like a dog. You know, mm. sorry to dumb the dog people, but Mabel gone. You know, I'm be sad for. I give her about a month. What? You gonna be hurt? You think I'm be falling out on this podcast? <laughs> <laughs> like it's different though, all right? I feel like I can get past Mabel passing, mm-hmm. but like for core people in my life, I don't get past it. I evolve. Mm. Mabel was a core person in your life. Well, okay. I'll evolve around Mabel too. But I don't think it's a thing. Like, you know, and just even as I'm getting older, just the words we use, right? Mm. Like, just be careful on what you say to people. Yeah. Like, getting past. You can't get past this. You can evolve through it. You can be in it. You can work through it. Well, you can grow through what it. What Lauren Lynn to say, you don't possess anybody. Yeah. You just experience them. So, mm. you just experience me for that time. Oh, and what a blessing. Mm-hmm. Or what she even said, what the last stage of love is grief. Mm-hmm. Oh! It's hard. It is. But for folks out there who know it, let us know. School us. Um, I actually, it's been a lot of death around for the last six months. I Actually, I was going to start reading up a little bit on it more. Um, mm-hmm. Not the Bible. Y'all going to be funny. What page in the Bible? Like, just the idea. Maybe death is not what I'm looking for. Grief. Mm-hmm. I think I'm a. Y'all know I'm doing this book challenge. Y'all know I'm reading. Actually, I'm already a week and a half behind. I was supposed to read Color Purple in a week. I'm still reading it. So it looks mm. like it took me two weeks to read Color Purple. And then I'll be done with it in a couple of days. But I think I'm going to look for a book on, like, grief and, like, sorrow and loss and navigating through that and mm. what it looks like. I'm curious, is there a book that focuses on underrepresented populations and grief and loss? I don't know. Tam, that can be a project for you. I know you're listening. Like, oh, <laughs> like just loss. Like, grief, loss sorrow and navigating through those emotions yourselves mm. with the community and other people and does being underrepresented how does that play into that i think that'd be an interesting topic to read up on yeah. just to see right because never mind i think it'd be interesting mm-hmm. but like i said y'all y'all are a community of support we're a community of knowledge we share it so y'all let us know y'all experience and y'all thoughts and opinions yeah you gonna close us out now yeah so as always to submit your black love story go to blacklovematters.com to submit a question for kitchen table talk shoot us an email at blacklovematters at gmail.com and to leave a comment about anything we talked about we got that website we also got soundcloud and we got that voicemail and that's at 508 784 one 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 one. That's five zero eight seven eight four one 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 one. Talk to y'all later. Remember, love, love is, is ever evolving. evolving. Peace. Peace.